All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And today, we're going to be talking about some Relic characters, and in particular, Relics that I wish I had in my account at 10.5 million galactic power. So, hopefully, you guys kind of enjoy when I do these videos where I kind of take a look at myself and say, man, I really wish I had these Relics. So, there's a couple of rules that we're going to implement here to make sure that this is a fair list, because uh, we'll get into those rules. But, like, yeah, we want to make sure this list is fair and that we're not just, like, naming obvious characters. So, like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Of course, Let's give a huge shout out to our channel members. Again, to those of you on the council, I appreciate you guys so much. I do apologize. Like, I don't know if I'll go to three graphics right now. It's There's so many of you. So you guys get this special card here. Like, you are truly appreciated by the Fat Phil family. And I thank all of you for your continued support. And, of course, to those of my Wampa and Jedi Master tier members, thank you guys again for just continuing to put your faith in me to bring you good content. So hopefully you guys enjoy this list. Let's talk about some relics that I wish that I had in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now, there are rules. Number one, I have to have the character at seven star. So I can't say that I want Tusken Warrior at relic levels. I need to have the character at seven star. The rule being, I need to have the ability to take that character to seven star. So that would exclude your, you know, Paz, right? Like these characters here. So it's gonna exclude characters like that. The second kind of character we're gonna exclude is, you know, even though I have Trib Zero and BT1 at relic levels, I need them for the Dr. Aphra journey. So I don't think it's fair to also include characters I would need for the journey guide in this list because like, of course they need to be relics. Like they need to be relics. It doesn't matter if I want them or not, I need them. So this is gonna be characters that I want, right? These are true wants, desires, not things that I need for a, you know, a galactic legend or I guess not galactic legends anymore, but a journey guide character. So uh, let's get into the list. So the first one is the armor, and she's got a couple of uses. The biggest thing I find myself always missing out on is the fact that I don't have her, which gives me the ability to regularly use Lord Vader to beat, um, of course I can't think right now, regularly use Lord Vader to beat Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you know, the Jedi Master Kenobi trick to beat it, or Sith Eternal to beating Jedi Master Kenobi. Now that may be going away with Darth Bane, so that's, that could be a really solid thing. Um, but the other thing with the armor that would give me a lot of capabilities here would be a thing about the Jedi Knight Revan, Jedi Knight Luke counter to uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. But I think the biggest thing is with Bo-Katan uh, Mandalore now here, I'd love to have my light side Mandalorians, love to have that A-team, and I feel like the armor would be part of that. She's got some good stuff there. So just like the uses that I could get out of her would be really, really good, would allow me to do some off-meta things and move my roster into a different direction, right? Be able to utilize more of my roster. So I, I'd really love to get her. Just the problem is I've got her seven star. I have the Zeta even because I used her for a long time to be... Um, I was using her to beat Supreme Leader Kylo Ren with my Sith Eternal a long time ago. Uh, that was a really weird counter, especially with one this low. Um, but it's the Kyra Tech. She needs so many, I think she needs 500 Kyra Tech, which is a lot. All right, Dark Side Mandos to the moon. I think the Dark Side Mandalorian team is gonna be so good. I'm gonna be getting the new Moff Gideon, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon soon. He kind of slots in with those Dark Side Mandalorians. And I'm looking here at Imperial Super Commando and Gar Saxon. And honestly, really starting to debate if I should take these guys to Relics. Now, the nice thing with both of these guys is, hey, they don't require Chirotech until they're finisher pieces. So for 200 Chirotechs a piece, this is a steal. They're also really good at beating General Skywalker, as many of you know. The big problem here isn't like the, the Relic gear, the Gear 13 gear, not as horrible for me. I've been hoarding that for a while, but signal data. I can't really take these guys beyond certain relic levels, so I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. I really should. I feel like this is a mistake, so you guys gotta let me know if you think that too. But I just I haven't had the opportunity to do this because of the signal data. I really am low on signal data. Um, it's not even like the relic materials. Like I've got plenty of relic mats, as I will show you guys. Well, maybe we'll get into that. But I just it's the signal data, man. The signal data kills you. Oh, Admiral Trench. All right, I know you all are going to make make fun of me for this, but I want Admiral Trench at relic levels. I have the Separatists to take advantage of Admiral Trench. I could use the Separatists with Admiral Trench, particularly with Darth Bane on the horizon. Wat Tambor is going to be without a home, and I could really, really put the like top-tier Admiral Trench team together. Of course, their big issue here is Zetas and Kyratex and, you know, everything in between that I would need for Admiral Trench, but I could use him. And it's something that everybody always says, oh, Admiral Trench is on the bench. But 
again, you guys have to think about my account for a second, that every account I'm going up against in Kyber 1 has a Relic Admiral Trench, has that A-team, and I don't. So that's a huge advantage, because he is a solid character. I think a lot of the hate about Admiral Trench is at the top end of the game. I guarantee most of my subscriber base who are in the middle part of the game would struggle to be Admiral Trench without using a top tier team. So I don't want to hear that he's bad. He's, you know, a middle of the road character that it's a solid team. It will cause problems if you don't know how to beat it. But, you know, at the level that a lot of us play at, it's not this great, great team. But for somebody like myself, it can actually be a big problem not because I don't have the tools to beat it, but because I need those tools to beat other things. So having one of my own would at least give me a little bit of flexibility, both offensively and defensively to make a better, you know, decisions, do better in Grand Arena. So that's a, that's a big one there. Um, I don't know when we'll get him because of the Zetas. The Zetas on him are very expensive. He needs like three Zetas. I wouldn't even put the Omicrons on him, but there's other characters that I'd rather get before him that maybe aren't quite unlocked yet. <clears throat> Gideon, Bane, Cal, but Trench, I definitely want to get this year. I feel like I'm going to make myself do that at some point. Another one that people love to make fun of, but Omega does make the Bad Batch better. She makes them a far more consistent counter against some of those top tier teams. Um, just a character who I think rounds out my Bad Batch squad, allows me to use a full clone trooper team with them, because that is one of my weak points right now, is when I have to do clone trooper stuff, I really I need to pull Captain Rexon, which is fine, but how many times, you know, you think of a Grand Arena, do I really want to pull Captain Rex away from a Phoenix team if I had a Relic Omega? I also just feel that at some point, we're going to need her. I don't know when, but Capital Games is famous for this. Like, everybody's going to ignore her because you don't need her for the Bad Batch to work, which is true. But she does make them better, and I think that in the future, she could be a character who Capital Games could be making us Relic. And the more I sit here and think about it, the more I'm like, man, I really would love to have her at Relic levels right now. Because uh, they're, the Bad Batch is a very good counter to Dark Trooper Gideon, but you really need Omega to make it work, so... You know, that's another big problem there, right? For those of us who are in poverty. Baze Malbus. This one I can tell you will be happening, just not with 3v3 going on, because I don't need it for 3v3. But I need a tank for Leia. I absolutely, absolutely need a tank for Leia. And I feel like Baze is going to be that option, because I can't pull old Ben away from the Starkiller team. I can't pull Kanan away from the Phoenix, and that kind of leaves you with some other Rebel tanks to choose from. And I feel like Baze is that answer. He's got a really good kit. No Zetas required. I've had him gear 12 for ages. Back from when him and Sharut were the like meta. I've had him for ages. So he gains max health, which is nice. Again, he's kind of got like garbage mods. But the big thing is that uh, he gains 5% turn meter whenever enemies gain buffs. So he can gain a lot of turn meter. He's got a mass dispel um, on here, right? You know, physical damage, all enemies still dispel buffs on them. This is also a buff dispel, um, and then his basic uh, has speed down. Um, again, a lot of the, a lot of his kit is dependent on Sharut, but I feel like he's just a solid tank option for Leia if you can't spare your Jedi yet, which that's obviously the position that I'm in. So he will be happening. I can tell you guys that. Like I, that's one that I will be doing. There's no Zetas, minimal Kyra tech, so that's kind of a win-win situation for you know the Fat Phil family right here. Um, Again, going to be waiting until 5v5 to do that because we can get away with some Leia teams for other stuff. And then Zombie. I mean, guys, you know this has been on the list for forever. I'd love to say, oh, the whole Night Sister faction belongs here, but really just Zombie could happen. And the reason why I just could use Zombie is, again, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and Daka kind of being that team that they are. I could really, really use them because one of my big issues when I go up against certain teams in like a 3v3 setting, I can't bring Datacrons on my Supreme Leader Kylo Ren because Zombie is gear, what, gear 10? Yeah, she's not even gear 11. She's gear 10. And I mean, I could gear 12 her easily, but it doesn't help because I can't use Datacrons till she's at Relic, probably, you know, Relic 3. And she doesn't need to be super high Relic. She's like a Relic 3. Like, I don't need a super tanky zombie. And honestly, there are times where having her this low gear is super beneficial but i think later on i mean obviously you want them all relic seven for the stupid night sister mission on dathomir but you know that's a whole another case in point like i just i really think these two definitely need to happen this year 
Um, you know, the rest of these, I'd love to, I don't know when it'll happen. Like, I feel like the armor and Omega and Trench are definitely more in that stretch category because their requirements, you know, the gearing, Zetas is extensive. Whereas these guys and these characters down here, because they're older characters, because they've been in the game for such a long time, they only need Kyratex at the like finisher piece. So realistically, you know, I could spend what, 400 Kyratex on these older characters and I still wouldn't be able to relic the armor at that point. Now, I say this a lot, and I want to mention something that I maybe I need to preface with this more, make sure I like bring this up. That while I always talk about like the Kyratech, you're still spending the gear 13 gear. You're still spending those furnaces and hollow lens and those laptops. Like you're spending all the rest of that stuff for four characters worth comparative to one. Just I've often found it easier to accumulate that gear than reaccumulating Kyratex. Just one man's humble opinion. I always feel like I can much more easily get, you know, these gear pieces, right? I've always found these a lot easier to get compared to this, right? I feel like these are just, especially because, and I think the reason for that is because this piece is needed for characters to go from even, you know, gear eight all the way up to, you know, gear 13, whereas, these pieces here are only if you're taking a character to relics so it's far easier to accumulate a lot of them just just my opinion you guys let me know your thoughts on this list what characters were you expecting to be on here i'd love to know your thoughts and again with that caveat that like i can't pick saw tarful bane gideon because like i don't have them unlocked yet they're journey guide characters they kind of have to get gear anyway so let me know all your thoughts i love all of you guys may the force be with you and i will see you in the next video cheers guys